tutorial on how to use uh, MRI Pro. My name is Jeremy Grummet. I'm a urologist in Melbourne and together with my co-founder uh, Dr. Rowan Miller, a radiology trainee, we have created this online training program called MRI Pro. Uh, this training program is for radiologists and urologists uh, to train them up in reading prostate MRI, uh, in particular multi-parametric prostate MRI. Uh, we did this because uh, we could see that prostate MRI was becoming a routine part of the diagnostic workup for prostate cancer and indeed uh, it is now in uh, clinical guidelines around the world. Um, but there's one great missing piece and that is that there's very few radiologists who actually know how to read prostate MRI properly uh, and that's because it's a very difficult uh, and nuanced uh, set of scans to read. And the only answer, uh, apart from uh, learning the details of reading prostate MRI, is to simply practice on a large number of cases. And that's exactly what this course uh, provides. So there are 300 cases, um, as I'll show you as we go through a couple of the demos. Uh, and every single one of them, importantly, has histological verification. So for prostate MRIs that are not showing any cancer, uh, that has been confirmed with a very thorough transperineal prostate biopsy uh, with a larger amount of cores than have previously been taken in order to verify that there is in fact no prostate cancer present. Secondly, if the prostate MRI is positive for significant prostate cancer, then uh, MRI Pro is unique in as much as it will show the user uh, the actual prostate that has been removed and sliced up histologically and shows you where within the prostate uh, that tumour is. But the best way to uh, show you um, how it works is obviously to go through a couple of cases. Before we do that, um, just a couple of other features that I think are really important to uh, be aware of. Um, as I mentioned, there are 300 cases, so this is a very large caseload. Um, if a user takes five minutes for a single case, then that's about 25 hours worth of work. And the advantage, of course, of being online is that all you need is a laptop and uh, an internet connection, and users can plug in and out of their cases whenever they want. So they can do it um, at their own pace, in their own time. Um, and so uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a progress tracker, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and we have uh, CME points available right across Europe uh, and the United States, uh, as well as Australia and New Zealand. Um, and that's through these various bodies that you can see here. So I'm just going to scroll down now um, to, to show you that we, we've managed to uh, gain the services uh, and endorsement of uh, some of the world's most prominent people in this space. So you can hear uh, Prof uh, Yella Barents. Um, who is really renowned throughout the world as one of the uh, grandfathers of uh, prostate MRI uh, from Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Then you've got urologists Caroline Moore and Samir Tanasia um, from both UK and the US respectively. And that's just a, a fraction of the team, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, Movember uh, uh, has given us support um, for this project as well because it aligns with their mission to improve prostate cancer outcomes. Uh, you'll see on the home page as we slide down here, just a, a brief uh, snippet of some of the MRI pictures. But importantly, um, when the MRI is positive, you'll see how the prostate itself is depicted with this orange uh, spot here uh, showing the actual cancer within the prostate. And that can obviously be directly related back to the images on the MRI. And we'll show you that in just a moment. Um, and finally, this progress tracker we think is very important because when you think about uh, the way people learn and gain their uh, CME points, uh, the commonest way is for people to attend a workshop at a conference. Now, at those workshops, you might see a handful of cases uh, and you may well uh, gain some valuable learning. However, um, each attendee at those workshops goes away and neither themselves or uh, the people who have uh, given the course, really have any idea as to how good that person actually is at reporting MRI. So one of the major uh, points of MRI Pro is not only as a trainer, but also as a quality assurance uh, tool. Uh, and that really uh, is evidenced in this progress tracker. So you can see how many cases you got correct in the first 20 you did, 
how many you got correct in the last 20 you did or the last 50, how many correct overall, no matter how many you've done, and how many you've done, and also how much time have you actually spent engaged in the program doing the cases. That's another important um, component because um, when measuring CME or, or claiming CME points, um, it's typically on a per hour basis. So users can simply screenshot this uh, and send it into their uh, college uh, to obtain their CME points, uh, as you can see uh, listed here. So let's go to, uh, first of all, let's go to uh, just quickly some of the other people who are advising us and have helped us along the way with fantastic tips as to how to uh, properly create this program. Uh, that's myself there uh, as, and my Rowan Miller, my co-founder. You've already seen Yella, Carolyn and Samir, but we've also got an array of experts from around the world. So Richard O'Sullivan and Andrew Ryan are our local experts. Uh, but Tristan Barrett and Christoph Kastner are well known for delivering uh, their prostate MRI courses around the world. Uh, and they're from Cambridge. Uh, Ninka Hansen, uh, who uh, has been working in Germany, is also part of the Cambridge course. Uh, and I've got other colleagues, including uh, Boris Hadashik, Heinz Peter Schlemmer uh, from Germany, Jeff Son from Stanford, Antonio Westphalen from UCSF. Uh, and Stefan Heinz has also contributed his advice, uh, another one from Melbourne, as well as Jochen Voltz from France and Henry Ho from Singapore. And finally, we have Jeremy Teo from Ch uh, Hong Kong and Lawrence Klotz, uh, well known uh, to many urologists from Toronto, Canada, uh, as well as Declan Murphy here from Melbourne as well. So let's go and see a couple of the cases. Uh, so if we go across here to example cases, uh, we'll go through a couple together so you can see exactly how the actual program works. Now, um, anyone can access these uh, first five cases, uh, but once they've had a look at it and worked out how it works, then of course you can go to subscribe uh, by going to the uh, sign up page uh, and, that, and from there you can access the full 300 cases. So this is what every single case uh, starts out looking like. Um, you can see the main image in the middle of the screen and all these thumbnails. There's a little white arrow down the bottom there, uh, which shows that there are more thumbnails that can be chosen from. But we've deliberately uh, uh, displayed this so that the top three thumbnails are by far the most important series. They are the T2 weighted axial images, the diffusion weighted high B value axial images, and the diffusion weighted ADC map axial images. We're gonna go through those uh, in just a moment. Before we do that, uh, you've got all these blue buttons on the side here. Um, so the two, if we click that, means that we go to a double screen. And this is really important because it means that whilst we're watching a T2 series here, we can click on this one and be watching a high B value a diffusion weighted image series uh, on the other side. And if we scroll down, we'll see that those two sets of images scroll together. So we've got them linked, and this is really important because this is how radiologists uh, read prostate MRIs. Uh, very rarely will they have a single series on their screen at the one time. Sometimes they'll have more than two, um, but for the purposes of simplicity, we've kept it at two. Uh, so that's one feature where we can keep it as a double screen. Um, this up and down arrow just simply means that we can scroll up and down. So I'm just using my trackpad on my Mac here, but you could easily use a mouse instead. Um, there's a magnifying uh, function, a ruler, which is important, and that's very easy to use uh, by simply clicking on that and then clicking and dragging to mark out how long uh, this lesion is. We'll come back to this lesion in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about, but you can see that that's 22 millimeters. If we want to get rid of that measurement, we simply click on that line and cast it off up the top. There's brightness, and then of course you can just simply return to where you were at the start. Now let's just go through this particular case so that you can get an idea of what we're looking at. Um, this is a cross section, so it's axial through the pelvis. You can actually see the, um, the patient's right uh, hip there, uh, the head of femur, uh, and this is the prostate here. Now most of this prostate looks normal, but as I've shown you already, there's this dark area here, which is hypo intense, uh, and that's very concerning for prostate cancer. And as we scroll through, I'll just uh, take us off 
the ruler and back on to uh, scrolling. As we scroll through here, we can get an idea of the extent of that tumor. And really importantly, at the same time, we can see this tumor very uh, apparent on the high B value diffusion weighted images over here. So if I scroll through over here, again, we can see how that matches up on the other side. Now let's keep scrolling through here to, just to see uh, if there are any other lesions in this particular prostate. And here we go. You can also see here and here, there are two other white spots. Now when the white spots match the black on the T2 imaging, and there we go, there it is there and there, that spells trouble um, uh, or essentially cancer. So we've already got our answer. We've only looked at two series in this particular case. Um, and so let's have a look at how we actually answer. How do we engage, how does the user engage with this program? We simply scroll down and we cannot see another case until we've answered this current case. So these questions have been specifically designed to be highly clinical relevant. There's no esoterica at all within this program. This is about how to best report cases for patients um, so that it may influence their outcome directly. Now, PyRAD is the scoring system, which is standard. Um, it's one to five. In this case, we have, I've already shown you that this lesion here was more than 15 millimeters, which means that it automatically qualifies as PyRADS five. We've also seen that there were three lesions. So we'll click that. Now, this is much more uh, complicated. Your radiologist will know about each of these aspects. Um, for now, for the sake of time, um, the user has to click on them. Uh, and I'll just do this. Say there's lymph node metastases. We haven't actually looked for that um, in this in this demonstration, but I'm just going to do that for the argument's sake. And then I need to click where, if I if I think there's a, a tumor, where would I most likely aim for in a targeted biopsy? Now I've got three different lesions in this particular case, but the largest one is posterior on the patient's left side, and it's about mid prostate. Okay, which is this lesion here. So that's what I'm going to choose. And that corresponds to this spot there. Now, when we look at the scoring system, question one, two, and four, if any of those are wrong, then the user will get that whole case wrong. Because question three is a little bit less critical to uh, patient decision making, um, and more, much more difficult also for the radiologist. Um, you have to complete these questions, but if you get any component wrong, you will not get the answer wrong. Only if any of one, two, and four are wrong will the user be scored wrong. So you can see here I've been going for six minutes, um, and now it's time to submit the answer. So we wait for the answer to come back, and this is what the user will see. So first of all, they're told whether they get the, the, the uh, case correct or not, and there it is there. And this is where MRI Pro, I think, really shines because we have this beautiful picture and you just click on it to make it bigger and it opens in a new window. And as I've shown you earlier, this shows you exactly where the actual cancer was in the actual prostate. This is actual prostate tissue that's been sliced up, um, histologically analyzed and been marked out where the tumor is. So the index tumor, the most important one and the largest one is in orange. Uh, you recall that there were two other lesions which are marked out here and here. Now they were lower grade cancers and so they're not the index tumor and that's why they're marked in black. If we go then back to the case, we also have a verbal report. This is the actual pathology report for this case. And again, if it's too small, we simply click on that and we can see that it was a robotic radical prostatectomy. It was Gleason 4 plus 3 equals 7 with tertiary pattern 5. Um, and there were indeed some lymph nodes uh, positive. So we then go back to the actual uh, case. And this is really important too. We've created it so that the user can then go back and review the MRI. This is particularly important if they got the question wrong. If they, for example, thought that there was no lesion or there was only one lesion, then they can now go back and see where that, where the truth is, okay? Uh, and so that's why we've got that function in there. And then of course you can go back to the answers, but the user cannot change their answer. And that's a very deliberate mechanism uh, within the program because 
we want to be able to um, follow their uh, learning over time. And because we've got so many cases, 300, um, we expect to be able to see improvement as they get better uh, with more and more experience. So if we then go to the next case, uh, we're asked to, first of all, the, the user is actually asked to uh, enter some details. Uh, so I'll just do that now for the sake of brevity. And then we go on to the next case. So this is the second uh, demo case. So I'm going to click two to get the double screen. And I'm going to click on, this time I'll click on diffusion weighted uh, ADC map uh, to show you what that looks like. And then we'll start scrolling through. Okay. So just a few more points. This is the bladder with uh, urine in it. We've got the rectum back here and the prostate's just coming into view now in the middle. And we can see, interestingly, there's a bit of a cavity here in the prostate, which means that this patient has actually had a previous uh, partial prostate resection or a transurethral section of prostate. But we're not seeing any lesions on either sets of images. So if it's negative, then almost all negative prostate MRIs are actually a pyreds 2 because um, to be pyreds 1, it has to be a completely normal prostate. And almost all prostates have got a little bit of benign enlargement and that qualifies as pyreds 2. Now you'll notice when I click on pyreds 2, all the other questions gray out because they're no longer relevant. If there's no lesion, then the, the remaining questions become redundant. And we can automatically submit the answer for that. And there it is. So again, correct. And this time, of course, there's no prostatectomy. The prostate is still in the patient's body because there was no cancer. But the patient did have a very thorough transperineal biopsy uh, and that's been shown to be benign to confirm that there was no cancer. Now, we can also, we can go to the next case. Um, if we were doing uh, part of the 300, we would also be able to go to the progress tracker, which would be uh, a further button up here and actually determine how many cases we were getting right or wrong. So this is really, in a nutshell, uh, what uh, MRI Pro offers. Um, and it really is quite unique uh, in the market at the moment. There is nothing that comes close to uh, what this program offers. So I th we think that once people become aware of this program, particularly with the ability to attract CME points, uh, amongst radiologists, we think it's got a massive potential to be a highly educational tool, um, but also a, qual a quality assurance tool as well. So thanks for listening, and um, uh, I'd be very uh, keen to hear of any feedback um, and uh, happy to take uh, any questions via email. Thanks for listening, and uh, thanks also for getting the message out to your customers. Thank you.